Hey there, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. While you're here, go ahead and subscribe and ring that little bell and you'll get notifications when we upload new videos. If you've been following along recently, you know that we recently purchased a heavy duty truck. It's a 2016 Volvo VNL 780 and we're registered in South Dakota as an RV. A lot of you have asked, how does that process work? How do I register my commercial truck as an RV in South Dakota? So today, we're gonna to go through that process. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna show you the forms that you need to fill out to send to South Dakota to register your HDT as an RV. So stick with me and we'll get right into it. All right, well here we are in the Jones and to Travel studio. Actually, we're in the uh, toy hauler of the DRV Full House here, and uh, I've kind of got a temporary office set up, trying to get myself off the kitchen table, so this is pretty cool. This is exactly why we wanted to get this toy hauler, so we could have an office space. So before we get started, just a couple of uh, housekeeping items. First of all, I'm not an expert on South Dakota auto registration, or titles, or insurance, or the laws in South Dakota or any of that. I'm not a representative of the state of South Dakota, uh, Department of Revenue. Um, I'm not an attorney in South Dakota. In fact, I'm not an attorney at all. I'm just an RVer who has gone through this process a few times and I want to share this process with you. Now, prior to us purchasing our HDT, I did my own due diligence, my own research, and I didn't find a whole lot on YouTube or on the internet about how this process is done. I had kind of, you know, talked to some folks and learned that way, and then I went through and I did my own research and kind of figured it out on my own. So I want to share today how I did the process. Now, this is how it applied to me. May not 100% relate to your situation. It may not apply to you at all. It may be completely different for you, but I'm willing to bet that this is pretty close to what you're going to need to do to register your vehicles and your HDT in South Dakota. If you have any questions specific to this process or specific to South Dakota at all, please reach out to the state of South Dakota, the Department of Revenue is who you need to talk to about this process and ask them directly because again, I'm doing this in September of 2020, this video, and this stuff could change next week. Stuff like that changes all the time. So I just encourage you, take my video for the entertainment value that it is. I'm willing to answer any questions to the best of my ability and my current knowledge, but reach out to the powers that be in South Dakota and get your questions answered directly. This is the process we used in 2019 and 2020 to register our RVs and our HDT and our truck and our smart car and all that, those sorts of things. So uh, I'm pretty well versed in how it works just because I've done it three or four times. Uh, but again, you know, I'm not the expert. So I just want to make that crystal clear. Second, why South Dakota? <clears throat> now, as many of you probably already know, if you're looking to become a full-time RVer, there are really three states that are the most friendly to RVers, and that's Florida, Texas and South Dakota. Now, Florida, Texas, and South Dakota, all three of those states have no income tax. They, ha they each state have different rules about requiring you to have a mailbox there and how to register vehicles and all that sort of thing. I don't know the ins and outs of the processes for Texas or Florida, so I'm not gonna talk to those today. But if you reach out to the escapees folks, they have mail places in all three of those states, I believe, and they probably have more information, more expertise. They have attorneys on their side that can talk about specifics to your situation. So reach out to escapees. That's one great resource. We're going to go through South Dakota today, and it's going to be South Dakota specific. The reasons we went with South Dakota. Now we have relatives in the Midwest, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Arizona, Utah, and Texas was actually our second choice. The reason we went with South Dakota was for a few reasons. Um, number one, no income tax, no state income tax. Number two, 4% vehicle sales tax. Super low compared to the near 10% that we're paying in Arizona. It's easy to become a resident in South Dakota. You go there, you stay one night at a campground or a hotel, you get a receipt, you go to the Department of Motor Vehicle the next day and you get your driver's license. Or I think there it's called the Driver's License Bureau or something. But anyway, 
that receipt for one night stay and you get a driver's license and now you're a resident of South Dakota as long as your private mailbox stays current. So you have to renew it every year and make sure that you have a current South Dakota address. South Dakota is extremely RVer friendly. Um, everybody I dealt with with the government and with even some of the local places when I tell them what my address is, you know, the America's Mailbox address, they know that I'm an RVer. I mean, it's because that's what America's Mailbox does. They service RVers and truck drivers and folks that need a permanent resident that don't have a permanent home or sticks and bricks that sort of thing okay let's talk for a second about how we tina and i jones of the travel how we went through the process uh, to become residents of south dakota and to register our vehicles in south dakota and here toward the end here in a minute i'm going to go through the forms and show you how to fill out those forms and which forms are required to register your vehicle we went to america's mailbox which is located in pennington county rapid city south dakota and we paid for a mailbox and we have a mailbox address there that is our permanent address and we stayed there a couple of nights but the second day we were there we took a receipt from america's mailbox campground to the license bureau and we got our license and we became south dakota residents we surrendered our arizona driver's licenses and it's that simple we were you know i think you need to take your social security card your current driver's license from your state you're coming from and when you get to the license bureau of course you fill out an application and you get a south dakota driver's license really really pretty simple i think it took tina and i together about 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes for the whole process so really simple one thing i have to mention is you don't have to use america's mailbox um, there are other mailbox places in south dakota that cater to rvers so go online and search and do your research we found that uh, America's Mailbox is, they're very professional. They have experience doing this. They have tons and tons of members. So we felt confident that by going with America's Mailbox, we were gonna be okay, right? And that address is gonna work for us in the long run. Another thing I wanna mention, when we switched, we became South Dakota residents and then we wanted to get South Dakota license plates for our vehicles at the time, we had liens on our vehicles. We had loans on them. So because Arizona and Utah are both title holding states. In other words, when you have a lien on a vehicle in those states, they hold the title until you pay the vehicle off, then they send you a clean title. We had to, because we had liens, we had to reach out to Arizona to our lender and we had to have them send the titles to South Dakota. That process took a few weeks. So we left South Dakota with our driver's license. We reached out to our lenders and said, hey, we're moving to South Dakota, here's our new address, can you forward the titles? Because we're gonna register those vehicles in South Dakota. And, and we took care of that through our lender. Now, once South Dakota received those titles, they reached out to us and said, hey, we have your titles. Now you can apply for South Dakota titles. So we filled out the forms that we're gonna show you here in a minute. And we mailed those in to South Dakota along with all the required documentation, paperwork, and South Dakota issued license plates and the, the registration tabs and the registration and mailed those all to our America's Mailbox address. And then we had America's Mailbox forward them to us. I don't know where we were at the time. I can't remember. We may have been in Missouri. But anyway, they forward them to us. Okay. Now, in a case where you own the vehicles free and clear from your from the state you're coming from and you have those titles on hand, you can simply mail those titles into South Dakota and, and along with your application and they will turn that title into a South Dakota title. It's pretty easy if you don't have liens, it's actually easier, faster. You could do it all probably about the same time when you visit South Dakota to get your driver's license. I've also been told and heard that you can register your vehicle in South Dakota before you get your South Dakota driver's license. For example, you call up America's Mailbox and you say, hey, I wanna to move to America's Mailbox. I need a box number uh, to use as a permanent residence. They set you up with that, you pay them their fees, and they give you an America's Mailbox address with a box number. Then you can register your vehicles in South Dakota using your social security number and your America's Mailbox address. You don't need a South Dakota driver's license to register your vehicles initially. That kind of made me feel a little uncomfortable because it felt like, okay, I have an Arizona driver's license and now I've got my vehicles registered in South Dakota and it just felt weird to me. Now, not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing it that way. The South Dakota is perfectly fine with it, um, but I just, I don't know, it made me feel weird. So I was, I was glad that we had our South Dakota driver's license 
before we did all that and, and it just made made it feel better for me so that's just my own personal opinion once you fill out these forms um, you're going to need a weight ticket or a photo of the uh, VIN sticker on your car that shows the curb weight the empty weight of the vehicle because South Dakota bases all of their fees their their registration fees on weight so you're gonna you're gonna need to send them proof of the weight of the vehicle along with the rest of this documentation now like I said that could be a picture of the sticker or you could take it to a cat scale to truck stop and weigh it that way and send them you know a, a copy of the cat scale I did that with the HDT because the HDT I couldn't find a sticker that said what the weight was it, it kind of has gross like 80,000 pounds but I know that's not the weight of the tractor by itself so I took it to a cat scale had them weigh it and I sent a copy of that to South Dakota and that satisfied that requirement another thing with the HDT that I'm going to touch on here in a minute is they're going to because you have to fill out a special affidavit to get this HDT registered as an RV, they also want a picture of the truck. So I just sent them a picture of the front corner of the truck that the dealer had put on the truck paper ad. That was the picture I had at the time, and I mailed that to them, and they were happy with that. So uh, not that big a deal. I just wanted to mention that they do want a picture of the truck that you're trying to register as an RV. Let's get into these forms. There are two forms I'm going to show you today uh, in order to register a vehicle in South Dakota and B, in order to register your HDT or apply to register your HDT as an RV in South Dakota. So in order to get started, there are actually two forms. There is the South Dakota vehicle registration form, um, and I just simply Googled South Dakota vehicle registration form, and the first one that popped up is the PDF, which is the application for title. So we're gonna click on that. Now, every vehicle that we've registered in South Dakota came from another state. So for us, we simply check transfer new out of state. This brand um, does not apply did not apply to us because this is like manufacturer buyback, salvage titles, that sort of thing. You do not yet have a South Dakota title number. Now, if you bought a vehicle from a dealer or an individual in South Dakota, then it would have a current South Dakota title. Ours did not, so I left both of these blank. Then next, owner, here's where you know you would put your name, type of ownership, I put, or and then customer type individual. And then if you have a South Dakota driver's license, you would put that number here. If you don't, you can use your social security number. So South Dakota DL or your social security number. Then um, down here, you would put, you know, your spouse or, you know, partner, or if there's another person that you want on the title, you could do and, and then that way both people would have to sign to transfer title if you do or only one person has to sign to transfer title that's the way i understand it because we are individuals we are not businesses or llc's or anything like that and again your south dakota driver's license number or your social security number if you don't have a south dakota driver's license then your mailing address now we talked a little bit about America's Mailbox and how South Dakota is super RV or friendly and they understand that when they see America's Mailbox they know that you're an RVer so um, they're going to send the title and the registration and the tabs for the plates and all that kind of stuff they're going to send to your mailing address. Now I have talked to a couple folks who have asked them to send those things to a different address. But when I talked with South Dakota and I said, hey, can you you know, send my plates to my daughter's house where I'm currently staying? They said, yes, but it, changed, it puts that address in their system. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want my kid's home address or anything in South Dakota's system. So what I did is I just gave them my America's Mailbox address right here. And if I could type, And then once this stuff was mailed out, I mean, they mail the stuff out like the day after you pay the fees and America's Mailbox got it in two or three days and then I just had them forward it to me. You do the same America's Mailbox here at your physical address and that's the only thing I did was these two lines, uh, both with the same America's Mailbox address. This would be the VIN number of the vehicle, uh, the make, model, body type, the vehicle code. For example, for the smart car, I put car and then the year. Now wait, is something critical for South Dakota because South Dakota bases the fees on the curb weight of the vehicle, the empty weight. You can go ahead and fill that weight in here, uh, color. I don't know that any of this is really critical. 
I went ahead and filled it in. Secondary inventor cell number I didn't have, so I left these three rows blank. The odometer reading, it says for cars, nine vehicles nine years old or newer, so you go ahead and put the odometer in there, whether it's miles or not. It's all pretty self-explanatory. When we got the smart car, we traded in the dually and got the smart car. I filled that in here. I didn't put a dealer number because it's not a South Dakota dealer, but I went ahead and put 2017 Ford F-350. Uh, I, you know, I had a South Dakota title on it already, so I put that in here. And then I also went online to South Dakota and filled out the sold notice so they would know I sold the truck. The rest of the stuff I kind of left blank. I put in the, you put in the purchase date, purchase price. If you had a trade in, you know, the allowance on that, you kind of fill this out. It'll kind of calculate some stuff for you. But as far as this title fee and late fee and all that stuff, don't even worry about filling that out um, because they're gonna calculate all that when they get your paperwork. If you do have a lien holder, build this information in. You know, special mailing address for, you know, if you want it sent somewhere else, I guess is where you would put it here, but I just left all that blank. Sign and date, print it, and then you send this in along with your title if you have it. Um, and the weight ticket or picture of the sticker on the vehicle and send all that into South Dakota and I'll put the address and all that in the description below underneath the video so you know provide as much information as I can I'll also include the link to this form now keep in mind this is as of September 2020 so this form might not even be the same when you go to look at it if it's months or years down the line so just keep that in mind now let's jump over real quick to the recreational motorhome um, this is the form that you're going to use to register your HDT as an RV. You'll notice up here in the URL it says motor vehicle slash recreational motorhomes converted house cars. Basically, you're going to scroll down through this. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see converted house cars. But if you keep going, it's kind of hidden here on the very bottom. It's truck tractor affidavit. That's what you need to ask South Dakota if you can register your HDT as an RV. So let me go here and click on complete form and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. Give you a couple pointers. It's really simple. This would be your name, your South Dakota address, phone number, all that information, the vehicle information, license number. When I sent this in for my HDT, I didn't have a license plate yet. So because I had a temp tag from the dealer, so I just left that blank. I didn't have a title. I did have a VIN, obviously, in a year and a make. Now, in section D, it says, I hereby affirm that this vehicle meets equipment requirements and will not be used for private business use. So you're not going to use it for business use at all. It's private, completely private. Check all equipment that applies to this vehicle. Now, you'll see down here that it says, check all equipment that applies. To qualify, you must meet at least five of the criteria listed below, as well as the modification requirement stated above. So up here, it says to become a motorhome, the truck tractor should be modified to include a vehicular type unity built on a tractor chassis and designed primarily as temporary living quarters for recreational camping, vacation, or travel use. I took that to mean that because my HDT has a sleeper on the chassis, right? It's not just a truck cab, it has a sleeper that satisfies this temporary living quarters requirement. That's the first thing. The second, you want to go down and you have to check five of these. So for example, my truck has a microwave, cooking facilities. It has a bunk, sleeping facilities, and it has a refrigerator came mounted in the truck already. It also has it says heating or air conditioning system separate from the vehicle engine or the vehicle engine electrical system. Now, in mine, the cab heat runs off the engine, so it's not separate, so I couldn't check that. Uh, Self-contained toilet or toilet connected to a plumbing system. We bought a porta, porta toilet at Walmart and put it in the truck underneath the table in the back and that satisfies the self-contained toilet requirement. Portable water supply, including a plumbing sink, self-contained, well, we don't have that. We don't have a sink, we don't have a, a water tank or any of that. So that's four items, we have to check five. The final item, 110 or 115 volt system separate from the vehicle's engine electrical system with its own power supply or a connection from an external source or a liquefied petroleum system. My truck has a shore power connection where I can plug it into a pedestal. In addition to that, it has an inverter that works off of a battery. 
which is separate from the vehicle's electrical system. So that satisfied that requirement. So I checked that. Now in section E, will the vehicle be used to transport a motor vehicle, boat, or animal to a race, tournament, show, or similar event? Now what they're asking for here is, for example, let's take rodeo as an example. If you're a rodeo guy and you're hauling your trailer of horses, whatever else, your equipment to a rodeo and you're earning money, they could consider that, and this is just an example. I'm sure there's a thousand different examples and a, you know we could talk about this all day long, but that's just an example. That you would probably have to answer yes because you're, you're taking it to a race or a tournament or a show or something like that where you're, I think, you know, the whole point is you're making money so it's not private. So I checked no. And then it says if yes, so if you are, for example, going to the rodeo with it and you're actually performing in the rodeo, is prize money received from that activity declared as income? The cost of participating in activity is not deducted as a business expense and there's no corporate sponsorship exceeding 2001 calendar year. Note, if this vehicle is being used to tow a trailer, the trailer does not qualify for permanent trailer ID plate. The trailer must display non-commercial trailer plate. That kind of goes without saying because in your RV, your fifth wheel, it's going to have a, a South Dakota trailer license plate on it. It's not going to have a commercial plate. So that they're just kind of letting you know you can't tow a commercial trailer with a truck HDT registered as a private truck. If any of this is confusing or you're not sure please reach out to the state of South Dakota and ask them specifically. Then sign and date it, print your name, and then print this out, and you'll mail this form in along with your wait ticket, your application for title, and then they also want a picture, and where is that on this form? I thought it was on this form that said they asked for a photo of the vehicle. Um, I don't see it on here now. I may just be missing it, but what I did is I sent in let me get to the photo. I sent in this picture of my HDT, and this is actually the picture the dealer had on truckpaper.com. So this is the picture I sent them, and they were perfectly fine with that. I'm trying not to ramble on here, but this is the form that you're gonna need in order to ask South Dakota to register your HDT as a motorhome. All right, well, that's about it. It's a pretty simple process. South Dakota is amazingly RV or friendly, so please do your own research, check them out. I highly encourage Amer you to use America's Mailbox as well. Uh, they've been really good to us. We've never had an issue with our mail. We, we get it forwarded to wherever we're at, and uh, we've been really happy with their service. Go with whoever you feel most comfortable with. If you find a different mailbox place in South Dakota that you feel more comfortable with or you like better, more power to you. Um, you know, you don't have to do it how we did it. The other thing I did want to mention though is America's Mailbox does have a service. I think it's $50 and I don't know if it's $50 per vehicle or what it is, but they have a service. You pay them a fee and they'll do all this for you. I'm not exactly sure the limit of that process or, or that service. So you'll have to check with America's Mailbox, but check with them if you don't want to try and do this yourself that's fine have them help you but i've got to say if you're a diyer and you like doing this kind of stuff on your own it's it's super simple and straightforward once south dakota gets all your paperwork they'll calculate the fee and they'll reach out to you after they get the paperwork and say okay we're ready to complete this process and you know five ten minutes on the phone with them and they'll go through and explain to you what the fees are how much it costs you give them a credit card number and it's done it's a done deal on one of our vehicles i didn't hear from them for a while and i thought well they should have it by now and so i called in well it turns out with COVID and everything they were just slammed and so i was there my paperwork was there they just hadn't got to me yet but when i called in the the representative said let me go see if i can get your paperwork and i'll help you so she went and got it helped me and i jumped right to the front of the line they're they're more than willing to help and i've never had an issue uh, dealing with the uh, uh, south dakota department of revenue so that's it for today thank you so much i know a lot of you had asked how this process works and how do i register my hdt as an rv in south dakota so hopefully this video is helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll be sure to answer with the knowledge I have to the best of my ability. I may say, hey, I don't know, contact South Dakota because that's ulti your ultimate resource for this information. But I, you know, like I said, I'm willing to uh, throw my two cents in anyway. Thank you again. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thank you to all our new subscribers, all of our current subscribers. We appreciate every, each and every one of you. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.